Cause you're listening to Jams and T You won't see the show On your TV So we talk about things Musically Cause you're listening to Jams and T Listening to Jams and T Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of the Jams and Tea Podcast where we spin the jams and spill the tea. And today, this is our Record Club episode. We just talked about uh, the new Open Mic Eagle and the new Autecker record, so go check that out if you haven't seen that. But right now, we are going to be covering Tyler's recommended album for this week, which is Ultra Visitor by Square Pusher. Aka okay, okay, hey, so Tom Tyler. Yes. Circle, Why did you- Circle Presser. Why did you want That's us the one. to talk about this record? Why did you want yeah. to recommend it? Okay, well, it's not going to surprise anyone here to hear that I'm a pretty big IDM fan, generally speaking. Obviously, <laughs> I, we just reviewed Orteker, uh, and and so I talk about IDM quite a bit, and I am a fan of a number of different IDM artists, and Square Pusher is another one of those big, probably like the big four IDM artists, like Aphex Twin, Orteker, and... Metallica probably, and Megadeth. Boards yep. of Canada, I was going to say, but yeah, they... they <laughs> edge boards out megadeth edge of them out just just like that um but yeah so so and square pushers had a really kind of lengthy and storied career as well and most like orteker most famous for his early stuff like the first three records he put out same as orteker famous for their first three records for first and foremost anyway um and so and they're great albums. Uh, I know uh, August is, and and I believe Sersha as well has heard Hard Normal Daddy, uh, his second album, uh, a universally beloved record and a, a really seminal IDM album. One of the perfect intros to IDM as well, because it's not too cr- mm-hmm. crazy and freaky, but it is still really yeah. interesting it and fun. It's incredibly fun. Yeah, it's awesome. And, and it's, yeah, it's, and also it's called Hard Normal Daddy. Mm-hmm. Just an album title. Yeah, I, it's been really weird seeing you all talk about that album just because nobody has ever like mentioned the fact that it's called that. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're doing what with a normal daddy? <laughs> what, what the funniest thing about that title though is the word normal. Like, what is a normal daddy? <laughs> is there a hard abnormal daddy? It implies um, the existence of a hard extra daddy. I just want to imagine Werner Herzog being like, show me the daddy. Yeah. <laughs> I hate, I hate this oh. conversation. So I'm going to move on from that. So we're not talking about Thank that you. album today. Yeah. Um, but my point was Square Pusher famous for his early material uh, and then kind of got a bit more esoteric. Uh, a highlight of the period before the album we're talking about today, but after the big ones is 2001's Go Plastic, which I highly recommend. Uh, a much shorter uh, record that does kind of bridge the gap between Hard Normal Daddy and this record. Um, so, so Square Pusher didn't stop making great albums in the interim between the early great stuff and this, but certainly um, there was very little that hit with the same kind of compositional finesse and and coherence and sweep of that early stuff like Feed Me Weird Things and uh, the second album. Um, <laughs> then, but so Ultra Visitor is actually uh, Square Pusher's seventh album. Uh, came out in two thousand four. Uh, seventh album in I think like eight year an eight year span and uh, yeah I have a lot to say about this record I was I listened to I've been listening to Square Pusher's discography in order and so I was really struck when I got to this by how much it immediately just sort of stands out from the rest and I'll obviously explain in my review and perhaps um, again the quandary do I review first or last um, I think I will review last, and I've given enough context. Uh, I would like to hear. Uh, I would like to hear from the baby. Um, Who's the baby in this context? Well, Jake, I think it's probably you. So, oh, okay. <laughs> well, now that we've established it, that I am the baby, can I ask why? <laughs> uh, just because yeah. Jake, Jake is baby, like like the I'm I, baby I, meme. Uh, okay, I mean, what? W- uh, <laughs> okay. Right. Let's. Jake is Werner Herzog. Jake is cute, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, Here's not, bro. Jake, Jake that, is I guess. cute. I am going to start cute. saying hard normal daddy until you all stop. <laughs> <laughs> Good try. <laughs> okay. Um, I, of the people here, have the least experience with IDM. I think that is not a. a th- yeah, that's just the truth. Um, again, not for lack of interest, it's really more for the fact that it's just sort of a 
kind of just very specific musical niche and it's like really difficult to navigate so i guess me getting into autecker is sort of the, like the best way to go about this um it's a way but yeah but the thing was is that like when tyler first stumbled upon this and just started talking about it it was like this sounded like some like final form shit this sounded like an obstacle to listen to not in the sense that it would be like i, I guess difficult but it's like i, I wanted to, to try and go in with some kind of frame of reference to not just become totally overwhelmed and then when i started listening to autaker i was like okay i think i'm a bit more prepared for for something like this i can you know i listen to shit like autaker i listen to shit like burial i you know i'm i'm, tr I'm trying i'm trying and um it's, I guess, a testament to the versatility of the genre that it's like once you go into this album, and I haven't listened to Hard Normal Daddy or uh, any of the other ones, um, that like I go into this and then just sort of immediately, I'm just like, oh, this sounds nothing like anything I've heard before. And and on one hand, I'm like, okay, is this just because the sound is different or is maybe he coming at this from an angle that's just slightly different than his genre contemporaries? And it seems to be, well, I mean, a little of both. Um, because, you know, you're sort of listening to this first listen and you're just like, all right, this is about what I sound like. This is something that's compositionally dense and heavy there's a lot of shit happening a lot of passages that this is going through i mean i feel like the first two minutes of the title track it goes through like six passages of music and goes at different speeds and stuttering beats and cycles and it's just like whoa okay we are just zero to 60 immediately um that said i do like how the opening track just sort of it kind of eases you in, sort of like this distant echoing, and then it's just like, eventually it'll just be like, Brrr! which, you know, that's most of the album. Give it a good um, But there's occasionally moments on this album where you're just listening, and then all of a sudden there's just like an acoustic guitar passage, and you're like, uh, uh, oh, and, this, it, and it's like really pretty, and it somehow doesn't feel out of place. I, I was like, I was really thrown for a loop every time this record changed on me, which is like 76 times per song. But like, I also think that the real thing that got me prepared for this record was actually jazz, specifically uh, Ascension. I think that album unlocks this as much as any other IDM one would just because of the, well, the density, sure, um, definitely the complexity but also just the way that it switches up and flows into each other. Um, and yeah, so something the... I, just to interrupt really briefly, yeah, go ahead. something I neglected to say when I was introducing this is that, uh, especially in his early music, uh, Square Pusher does incorporate a lot of jazz elements. Um, yeah. This is actually like, uh, there's definitely some of those jazz elements here, but it's nowhere near as pronounced as it is on something like a hard normal daddy or music mm -hmm. is rotted one note like that early stuff is is very like this is a jazz idm that's what it is um yeah. so yeah it's it's a it's an apt point that i was relevant and i forgot to mention no yeah totally and i you know you just sort of instantly hear that and you're like electronic music and jazz like huh okay and i mean i'm not unfamiliar with that i've listened to stuff like um Oh, hell, I can't remember the name of that, uh, like, that jazz fusion record that came out, like, two years ago that was a really nice fusion of I mean, electronic and jazz music. For, for, for a good example, like, I'm a big Shoo Shoo fan, um, and their album Nina is rated on Wikipedia as a jazz record. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's, a a jazz, it's a jazz record in the sense that they are covering jazz standards, and they are not covering them in a jazz style whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 for sure. But they, that album, which I love, I listen to that record and I feel the presence of both genres so yeah. strongly. Sure. Yeah, and you can feel it occasionally here, although I would predominantly just call it more of an electronic album. Um, but that said, there, this is restless. In many ways, it is indulgent. It is heavy. 
it is throttling in a way that like like take a song for example my favorite song on the record if i had to pick one and just i i you know i won't front i really like this like so much more than I thought that I was going to. I thought that this was going to be something that was just way beyond my perception and approach to the point where I was just like, uh, I mean, I hope I can come up with something to say about it that'll justify my opinion. And I'm still thinking that, but I can just shower it with praise in the meantime for, you know. But uh, my favorite song on the record is Steinbolt. Steinbolt, listening to that, Sounds like you are going through electroshock therapy. Yeah. It is fucking intense. It is like the beginning of the insanely quick riff at the start of Fight Fire with Fire on uh, Ride the Lightning by Metallica, except like <laughs> at times 1,000 beats per minute. And it just fucking, like, it, it uses you. And you're just like, I was walking around... <laughs> I fucking, I was listening to this at work, walking around and like just looking at people like they don't, like I can't believe that these people that are looking at me don't know what I am experiencing in the interior of my mind right now. I feel like I'm going to like lean to the side and then my brain is going to leak out of my fucking ear. And that description alone should prepare you for the kind of eclectic and crazy listen that this is. I will say the best thing about it is how it manages to space itself out. The flow of the album is terrific. It is overwhelming at many points. It is dense and it is heavy. All those things that I keep saying that it is, but it does it in just the right amounts. I think that it does it with flowing, beautiful passages that just sort of segue into one another very, very, very well. Um, it just sort of, there's this, electro acoustic soundscape and throughout the whole record i guess my only like complaint with it is that it's it, it keeps bringing it back to like this element of like this live concert that you keep mm. hearing snippets of and that kind of takes me out of the record a little bit i won't lie like i i kind of got used to it as i listened to it multiple times but it, it's just sort of something like when i am in the headspace of a record like this I, I like to feel like there is nothing else in the world but me and that album. And then whenever that comes in, it's just kind of like intrusive to my brain. But, you know, it, it's not like that doesn't take up the vast majority of the record or anything. And it does create a nice little reprieve. Um, but it's like you, you just sort of like, oh, this is going to be this like really exhausting experience that's going to just like throttle you from beginning to end. Because it's 80 minutes long. Like it's not an easily digested uh record but it's just so like beautiful at points there are moments where it slows down where it lets up and there's just these unfathomably gorgeous soundscapes that are just like they border on being ambient but they feel too active there's too many moving parts i'd say and it's so there's a wide variety of them and there, I, I guess your mileage may vary on considering whether or not this is like too much for you or whether or not this seems unfocused, but I feel like the line between unfocused and multifaceted is a very thin, generally speaking. And I would just say that this is multifaceted. It's covering its bases. It is doing everything it wants to do. And yes, it is unruly and it is large and it does not give a fuck. But again, if you kind of surrender yourself to it, that's where the real enjoyment comes from. Um, I feel like there's just some of these compositions feel near like classical and how they are structured. Shit like uh, fucking iambic nine poetry uh, going into stuff like uh, telluric piece, district line two. They can go from just passages that sound like they should be part of different songs to something that is super dense or something that is super light at the fucking like just snap of your fingers i think the word um, i would use to describe it is sweet like like it just yes it 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 builds upon itself it never feels like these are happening because it's like whoa it's random so it's just you know whiplashing you around it's like i it feels purposeful it feels like there was a lot of thought and care that put into how these passages go into each other there's like 
there like every time a, a like a guitar shows up on this album it makes me happy and and smile inside just because this like really simple rudimentary instrument is being used in a way that like it feels focused and and normal sort of giving you a break from some of the other parts of the album but it also just the the some of the time it's like caked in this electronic fucking fuzz and it just sounds so good mm. and that's the like the, the the fucking production is just so, like everything it's like again it's like autecker and how it's just like there is something so visceral and texturable or texturable textured about the sound here where it's just oh it feels good it just massages the fucking like fucking it makes me go all smooth brain jake and i just really really like how that sounds and there's it, it's like it's weird and and enigmatic and occasionally it feels like too much but once i re-listened to it i just felt like again it, it doesn't have like the experience is something like a the tension building exercise of a neo swans record where it's sort of like kind of like occasionally the mix will just get so claustrophobic it feels like it is trying to like wrap its arms around you and fucking strangle your body or it's trying to fucking swallow you and then it'll just melt away seamlessly and then you feel like you're given an oh it's a wash and oh it's fucking crazy and like there's just there is shit that like i don't even know how to explain shit like 50 cycles but we did it I can't, I can't understand what's happening on most of it. <laughs> Both lyrically, instrumentally, who fucking knows? It, 50, it, it sounds cool. 50 and I Cycles like it. is like all three Matrix movies playing at the same time. <laughs> I, was gonna, I, was, I was thinking it's like, it's like, um, uh, like Gary Oldman in The Professional. <laughs> like, it, it, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, What's going on here? But I I like it. I have my own notes about fifty cycles. Oh, it's it's it. it is an again it is one of many intense overwhelming songs, but it is also something that is just it's dense and it sounds like a lot of this album too. I think is rooted in hip hop. A lot of it is rooted in like just a primal sense of like beats and how they are layered and how they hit. And yeah. it is so. Well, it's an fucking... album dominated by like a, an a, an obsessive love of rhythm. Like this is an yes. album about bass and drums. Yes, and it is primal. Those are the core the the core of instrumental hip hop as well. So there's definitely that connection there. Yeah, and the bass on it too. I mean, whenever you can fucking make it out, at least is fucking beautiful. And there's lots of elements of melody here. There's it's it sounds great. There's lots of occasionally there will be like just like a standard fucking jazz drum beat will just kick in, and it'll just kind of evolve from there. It's like if I could describe listening to this album in like an abstract way that still kind of makes sense. It's like watching a bizarre alien plant grow in before your eyes over the, like the course of something that would be like years, but you're seeing it all happen in like an hour and it just like blooms and blossoms and becomes this unruly fucking thing. And then once you get to the end on um, shit, like circle wave, Tom and help bus. Don't care if I'm saying that right or wrong. Or the stellar every day I love, you're just sort of left with a fucking wonderstruck sense of awe. And it's just, it's so manic and fucking insane. But there is always a method to its madness. And I feel like a lot of it, like there is so much of this album that I completely understand who that would put people off and just cause them to not fuck with this at all. But that said, man, if you are willing to just kind of go with this and let it take you on the ride that it can take you, you can have a phenomenal, like I cannot, like, I mean, maybe I could describe what this sounds like accurately or in a way that would be up to my own standard if I picked 
like seven different artists and different albums and smush them together and be like, here, this is what this is like. But as a singular experience, I have never heard anything like this before. And God damn, am I glad that I fucking did. Cause it rules. I love it. I'm, 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 I'm sad. Yes. Um, well, like, just... I just can't wait to listen to this more. That is the best thing I can say about it. Sick. I'm so fucking thrilled that you dug it. Um, yeah. Let's, well, let's just do a jams and tea order then. Uh, August, yeah. do you want to go next? Uh, I guess because I guess you're forcing it on me, so sure. <laughs> uh, something I've always been uh, fond of, which has always seemed to set uh, Tom Jenkinson, a.k.a. Mr. Square Pusher, aside from his contemporaries in IDN, is composition. Now, that, that seems very abstract, but of course I'll explain that. Uh, when you listen to a, a Square Pusher song, there's always a distinct understanding, a distinct sense of, of building upon the foundations of classical music, understanding that, understanding the inner workings of jazz, I think, as Jake has already made the a uh, good point of an understanding of that kind of construction because i feel what's always struck me about album like this album and hard normal daddy is that every song sounds like it's not like an off tech track where you're listening to it and it's something that they were sending back and forth and piecing together over time this is an album like all of his albums that sounds to me like he knew every note going into this, how it was going to sound, how it was going to be pieced together. He has, uh, Jenkinson has described this album as a beast of beauty and terror, which only its creator can truly understand. Uh, as, an, as an album, Ultra Visitor is interesting mainly by how wild and eclectic its influences are. I mean, we've got jazz, uh, stadium, like big arena rock stuff, psychedelic rock, as Jake's made a great point of uh, hip hop even. And it, it's all, all the more interesting when these, this wide array of influences are funneled down through the lens of IDM. Uh, most of the songs, like such as like at least the the title track and I Fulcrum, have this this feeling of kind of having this almost duality. How songs are kind of pieced together as couplets, not not really separate songs, but as Jake has also made a really great point of feeling like a big suite. This album has individual movements of different kind of emotional textures that guide you along it. For example, uh, the oh, the this first part is incredibly is just incredibly trippy and I think near downright impossible to pin down. A lot of this uh, trippiness is by the virtue of it, like any and all natural instruments having heavy filtration put on them, heavy distortion and heavy warping to the point where a bass is almost indistinguishable from just like a synthesizer or a, a programmed drum. It's, it's such an interesting experience to just try and pick apart and distinguish every, every sound you're hearing. And to even, even further this, there's the crowd noise that's occasionally added, making kind of even your sense of like, your sense of where you're grounded in this in this album feeling lost and uh like you feel there, there's almost like i i it's hard to explain but it, it's almost like an out of body experience for me where it's impossible to pin down precisely where this is happening because it's off it's clearly a studio built album but there is a lot of it that that feels so free flowing and fluid, like I'm, I'm unable to, to like you could tell. And I mean, some of this, we, what, what just fucks with my head so much is that some of the live stuff is like overdubbed and added in post, 
and some of it is like actual concert footage of, well, no, not footage, but concert recordings of Jenkinson playing bass and that just being distorted and it just, it's, it's just a feeling that is so off-putting in like the best way possible for this album where i yeah that I stuff feel lost. not to be presumptuous of people's opinions but that stuff should not work as well as it does but it just fits yeah. no it it works and yet it's just so eh, i'm like lost within it it's it's very interesting uh i mean despite my my i mean i think this album just sounds, it can sound hellish at points with its intensity, but it can also, but it also just has this incredible dynamic range. It's early stretch sounding gorgeous and sim and shimmering, but then you get the, the quick turn of Andre to 50 cycles. But even, even further in keeping with this, this mood shifting, this constant sense of shifting moods, is uh, like going from the dark and brooding tones of Menelik. Men 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 Menelik, I say. Menelik. Uh, but you've got that, and it shifts right into Sea uh, Town Smash and Steinbolt, which are just ridiculously fun songs on here. Uh, I, I do find uh, entering the second half with. Uh, an arched pathway and telluric piece. The album, I think, is kind of at its worst with a lot of the piano work here sounding really sloppy. I don't think that did the album a whole lot of favors. The, the tracks, I did, and I just thought these tracks didn't mesh as well together as other points on this record. Uh, and but a, a lot of this I, I do really love. I think the first half is amazing, and the second half I don't find as tonally well-defined as the first half, but I think it still does go go quite hard, with, uh, I think, Tetris Sync being a track that is incredibly well-defined in terms of its tone. Gorgeous song. Gorgeous in a, in a loose sense that... It I've sounds... got many things to say, all positive uh, about that track. <laughs> oh man, it's 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 overwhelming to say the least. Uh, he froze. Uh, please unfreeze. <laughs> Me to my frozen anxiety. Oh gosh. Sorry, you froze a wee bit there, August. Oh, I did? You're back now. Uh, okay, well, what I was saying was the same could be said for the uh, for uh, Tetrasync's couplet track, Tomib Help Blues. However, I don't care Tomib, about it. I believe it's Tomid Help Bus. Okay. Not that that means anything. No, not that any of the titles are, not that Ultra Visitor means anything either but i Big think it means he's means he's the ultimate visitor it's pretty obvious oh, he's not Thank the you. ultimate visitor he's just an ultra visitor listen he's smart hole the, the chad ultimate visitor and the virgin <laughs> ultra visitor <laughs> anyway yeah no i i want to see what the ultimate the ultimate visitor is like he's probably got a big, big Chad dick and vagina that are the size of planet Earth. He's got a be. dick and a vagina. He's hermaphroditic. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. I love Devil Man. Yeah, uh, but that's about, about all I have the, to what, say. What about here. if you love Devil Man? What about the May Cry Baby? Um, God, fuck, what? damn it! Just. What? Delete your account. No. <laughs> <Fuck off. laughs> 
<laughs> Morgan, what was, I would love to hear from you about this album. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't mean to surprise anybody, but the uh, the super jazz influenced IDM record is something I really <gasps> vibed with. I don't know if that's shocking. No. Um, I thought for a second you were being totally yeah. unsarcastic, and you were going to surprise us by saying you hate this album. <laughs> that would be funny. That, um, that would be that would be a choice. That's no, um. I would drive to his house and flick him in the eye. Yeah, I mean, like, who's, why? Just why would I do that? Nice. Um, but any, anywho, um, yeah, this is this. The, uh, much like Jake emphasized, this is quite unlike anything I've ever heard before, um, even within the realms of both IDM and jazz. Um, the 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 clear standout to me um is just the way this record sounds Mm -hmm. like whether it's organic or electronic it's just ooh, ooh, it's it's i mean it's all just so tasty it's like it gives me that buzz man it's just textured and deep and Rich, it's like a big chocolate cake. I just like it a lot. (laughs) That is a tasty burger. (laughs) (laughs) That was good. Um, (laughs) The fuck was I talking about? (laughs) Chocolate cake. Yeah, chocolate cake. Um, Burgers. This album makes Morgan hungry. That's the that's the review. I'm Which hungry. I mean is is a good compliment. I'm a, I'm hungry now. I'll tell you that much. Um, yeah, this is just it's just so good. It's so detailed, and every it, I definitely agree with Jake's assessment that it's it feels like super like classical music in terms of its structure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> It, it feels very deliberate and it's like so clearly Jenkinson's vision and it's beautiful almost throughout. And I, I just really don't have a whole lot to say about it because I'm sure Tyler is going to go into great detail with this and I'm going to agree with everything he says, much like with Stein. Well, what, on um, earth, what on earth would, would bring you to that conclusion? I mean, I was, I, I, you know, it's, just, um, uh, it's really, it's good stuff. It's good stuff here. Um, God, it's just the best thing about this album, I think, is just the bass melodies, the harmonics. Mm. It's just, oh my God, some Jaco Pistorius type of shit right here, man. It's, mm, I won't crush it up and snort it. Uh, especially in like iambic nine poetry, which is just like I, oh. I, 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 I saw God, and He was playing a Fender Precision. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. There's just like there's something so satisfying about the like August kind of alluded to it with just the layers of sort of like normal instruments that are kind of layered in this sort of electronic sound. And whenever I hear them, it just, it does something to like my spine or it just gets to this primal part of my brain where I'm just like, oh, it's scratching an itch. I didn't know that I had, and I I would, I could die right now. It's just what it is, (sighs) is just the gentle timbre of that guitar in the first seconds of Iambic Nine Poetry. Oh man. You can feel the strings being kind of picked, and mm-hmm. yeah. uh, that's 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 bass, that's bass harmonics, which is, n- I mean, just not how that instrument is typically used, ever. Yeah, I have I have to um kind of seed my instrumental stringed instrumental knowledge to you, Morgan. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. if you say it's good, I believe you. It's good. It's, it's, yeah. it's it, it shocks good. me that this album isn't like talked about more as being like like i don't know if it is like boundary pushing but it fucking sounds like it is 
I said, I can't believe this is, is just has a 3.7 on Sputnik. Yeah, it's like so innocuous amongst his discography. I'm just like, why is this not like heralded as some like it, forgotten classic? Like, like, is it just because the cover is just a face? Is that it? <laughs> is it the Hurley thing? <laughs> look yeah. at this! Look at this dude! <laughs> look at this! Look, look at this fucking look, man! Look at this fucking guy! Look this at this herb. fucking limey face playing electronic prick. He's just a fucking brick. I think what's what he it is? doing making electronic fucking, music? Fucking what it is? It's so like, not, not like all tech or British people making electronic music. Pe- what fucking it is? Da- Damien Rice looking ass. People, people saw people saw the sideburns and they just immediately just There's, wrote it off. That is know, why. Like that, is that, one is day only, away from mutton shops. That that's the only reason why people took against inherent vice. The only reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I can, I can reassure you all that this sounds uh, like a classic to me, and I am equally as befuddled as to why it's not held in wider regard. Mm. I was under the impression that this was considered a classic prior to listen to it. Uh, it's kind of like uh, it's beloved among people. It's generally beloved, but it's kind of a bit forgotten. I think uh, it's kind of mm. in that weird in between place where it's not like completely ignored, but it's also not heralded the way other idea, oh, the way IDM records like um, Confield or Music Has the Right to Children or oh, sure, sure. Uh, Richard D. James album. It's not heralded like those. Yeah. Or even Hard Normal Daddy for that. Yeah, matter. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it fucking and, should and, be. And the things about Hard Normal Daddy. Um, so, um, what do you have left to say, Morgan? I, nothing really. It just it just makes my brain feel nice. That's fair enough. Well, the thing about Hard Normal Daddy is like that album is filled with bops in a genre that can be quite oblique at times. Um, yeah, I think something that's overlooked about uh, the particular the particularly British, um, uh, you know, scene, IDM scene and the particular kind of artists is that they all uh, come from a background of like having incredible sense, like incredibly irreverent sense of humor. Um, mm-hmm. Like there is a lot of, you know, piss taking in music like this. Uh, I mean, the, the genre is, the face of the genre is Aphex Twin and he's basically like treats his music like mimetically. Like it's very, it's very kind of like irreverent. Yeah. Especially in the uh, Chris Cunningham music videos as well. Yeah, um, like I'm saying, yeah, I'm just thinking of like Richard D. James album specifically, like and then and, and like his biggest song, Window Liquor, which is just yeah, hilarious. the music video of which was directed by Chris Cunningham. Yeah, which is amazingly it, it, just uh, look at his album covers. Yeah, that's, that that tells you everything you need to know about. And, and it's, yeah, my point is, it's not unique to him. Like it's a it's a sure. quality that a lot and, of these artists and I, have. And I I love Aphex Twins's um, IDM music. Um. But um, I referenced him as a composer for a short film recently um, to the composer of that film due to his work with a uh, prepared piano on some of albums. Thank you. It just does amazing work with that instrument outside of IDM. Um, and I think actually that album shares some quite a lot in kinship with Ultra Visitor. Yes. Yeah, it has a lot of the same kind of drum and bass programming and uh, textures to the. It's much more. It's much less organic uh, than this album is, but it has a lot of the same kind of timbres. Mm. Well, also, um, this album balance. Uh, I mean, in a way, with drug use, it kind of alternated tracks almost between IDM and Pierre piano pieces. Yeah. And on this album, you get half and half, but not alternated. More classical IDM and. Uh, jazz infused drum and bass music honestly in a um, sense it feels like idm is the wrong genre descriptor this is kind of like a yeah mixture like it is not listed drum and bass it's not listed as idm on wikipedia i think um it's listed as new jazz and oh, uh, see that, that doesn't really capture it either no, and music concrete that's uh, just maybe like five minutes of this album hell what the yeah. hell is yeah. that supposed to mean? Music yeah. concrete is like uh, you take organic sounds that aren't necessarily musical and construct them into music. I tell you what, an, exam- was, an example that, of music concrete. Was, uh, Sorry, Morgan, you go. I, I was just going to say, I thought that was the last New Order album. No, like music concrete is like avant garde music where you have like stuff that isn't sounds that aren't musical and you're just constructing a bedrock of them. An example 
the song Eaten Alive on the new Clipping album. Is yes. Concrete. Mm. That is, yeah, I was good. thinking of Clipping when you said that, and I was just like, yeah, yeah it's kind of probably one of those. Mm. Anyway, yeah, anyway. Um, I think this is way more ca- comparable to Dracuse. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I love what this does with um, jazz style bass music. Um, that's my, probably my favorite track on this record is Steinbolt which is yeah, more yeah Steinbolt game yeah but it's more interesting overall, it's not I the love... track I expected to hear multiple people multiple people say is their favorite so that's fun I know it's so abrasive and obtuse it's abrasive and obtuse and weird and dense um and look, just to preface this, I don't have a whole bunch to say about this record, mainly because you guys have done such a great job talking about it already, and I suspect Tyler will go into a lot of great detail about it. Don't but, worry about um, that. Steinbolt. Really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steinbolt. Love that song. I love what the song does with bass and uh, live sampling. Um, I think this record is madcap. Um, I think this is maybe a bit too unwieldy for me to really bond with it um, for the length it has. Um, but my God, if you want to hear a record, if you're a, the, the, if you if you are open to wide varieties of music and want to hear a record that sounds like nothing you've heard before, this is the record for you. It does a lot with established genres of music, throwing them all in the kind of uh, jambalaya pot. Um, and you come out with this wonderful gumbo, you know. Um, this what this, this record tastes like a gumbo. Is, is Mr. Mr. Pusher f- from Louisiana by any chance? <laughs> In- decidedly, decidedly, um, not. Where, 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 interestingly, yeah. um, Werner Herzog had a movie about one of his, about one of his films made called. Uh, something of the Forgotten Dreams about his making of Fitzcarraldo. Uh, and it's directed by a guy called Les Blank. And he directed a short film about Cajun food, which is where I first learned a lot about jambalayas and gumbos. He also uh, directed a, a short film, film about he also directed a short film about apparel food called Werner Herzog Eats His Shoe. Eats his own shoe, yeah. 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 <laughs> also the documentary you're bringing up, I believe, true. is called Burden of Dreams. You're correct. Thank you. Head anyway, um, <laughs> this record is great. Um, it's just it's like an hour twenty minutes, and I feel like if it was like fifty minutes and this ill connected, I would really really bond with it. But over eighty seventy nine minutes, when it's this unwieldy and disjointed and a structural, it, it, it becomes a chore at points, but I, only at points. It is an amazingly accomplished record. Yeah, I don't know. I think I might object to the word a structured or a lacking structure. No, I, and I can see why. It's probably not the best way to describe what I mean, but it's um, like like a gumbo. I will happily eat it and eat the shrimp and everything you put in it and just whatever you found in your back garden you're throwing in the pot. Um, but if you're going to give me a bowl full, it's like a mountain, that might be a bit of a task. Okay. No, that's fair enough. Um... It's out of pure curiosity, Sersha. How many times have you had the t- uh, chance to listen to this? Um, I've listened to it as many times as I do for every record we talk about on this podcast, uh, which is um, at least three. I try to listen to it one or two more times, but I can't always. That's all right. I just know when I first listened to it, I mean, I definitely loved it first go, but I had to take a break before I could listen to it again. So I do wonder. Yeah, the first time I listened to it, I took a break halfway through yeah. the first time. Yeah. Definitely. Um, okay. Well, I've a lot to say, thankfully. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah. This is an album that serves as a career summation as well as an ambitious step forward for Tom Jenkinson. Uh, it's his seventh album, as I said, and in my opinion, his most musically, compositionally, and structurally impressive. Uh, across a sprawling 80 minutes, Tom essentially takes you on a journey through every artistic tool he has in his arsenal. In a sense, it feels like an attempt at encompassing his entire career and making his masterpiece, which I think is sort of underlined by the cover art choice. I think that is Tom saying, this is me. This is everything I can do. 
not in a braggadocious way, just in a way where it's like, I'm putting my all into this more than ever before to the sense that basically it is me. Um, the interaction between the organic and the electronic uh, qualities of this record uh, is far more accomplished than it had ever been in the past. And it's always been pretty good in, in Square Pusher records, but here it feels like final form shit. Uh, and, and it's just they, the two kind of organic and electronic general categories of texture, I guess, meld together beautifully uh, and never, mis, never kind of feel uh, misplaced, which is really, I think, quite impressive as an achievement, especially when you're incorporating a mixture of studio and live material on a record. Like, how is, does that not sound, you know, jarring? And yet it doesn't, to me anyway. Um, Ultra Visitor, the title, title track and opener, uh, I think is, uh, I have a few, there's a few songs I'm going to be a bit, a bit hyperbolic about uh, in this review, but I just know that I genuinely mean this. Uh, I think that Ultra Visitor, the title track, is one of the most impressive pieces of IDM I've ever heard. Uh, and it's maybe Tom's signature track, though there's definitely a, a number of other contenders like uh, Cooper's World and Beep Street come to mind as well. But this track really feels like a career summary uh and the whole record's a career summary but this is like the career summary of the career summary at the start uh the drum programming on this track is is frenetic but detailed and you get an integration of these of those percussive electronics with actual live drumming like so you have both happening on the same track which does happen a few times on this record um indeed from the crowd noise that bleeds in through the start of the song and recurs throughout the record Tom essentially constructs a holistic beast of an album that feels like a living, breathing creature, messy in all of the ways that life is, but also frequently awe-inspiring with its size and just the mag magnificence of it. Um, the climax of the title track with this kind of startling ascending melody that kind of intensifies among a sea of shimmering keys and clattering drums is absolutely resplendent. Um, the track itself bleeds into the playful instrumental of I Fulcrum, which is one of many interstitial tracks across the album that I can understand not working for some, but for me really add to that feeling of a live, almost improvisational experience that nevertheless reassures you with its finesse and confidence. It feels at once appropriate to say this is one of the greatest IDM studio albums and one of the greatest IDM live records. Um, mo more than just energy, though, what really makes the shorter tracks here so effective is the way that they function as a showcase for Tom's flashy but thrilling bass playing, which is very proggy and textured. Uh, one could even say a bit wanky, um, but I'm not saying that. I'm just saying one could say that. Um, but for me, it's just kind of part of the whole manic sugar rush feel that propels this thing from start to finish. Uh, also, the placement of I Fulcrum as a piece of beatless improv serves well as a setup for the incredible drumming showcase of I Am Nine poetry, which, again, it hits harder for the fact that the previous track had no drumming at all. But I Am Nine poetry. We have to talk about this track. Um, uh, ever since I first heard it, I, it was, you know, some of your favorite songs you kind of grow with over time and kind of slowly they become sort of part of you in a sense, but then there are other kind of favorite tracks that it's like the first time you hear them, it's a transformational experience where it's like everything that's happening is exactly what I want to happen as the track goes on. And then it just keeps, get, it keeps like doing what you want it to do and more and more of that until it's basically just, you read my mind, you projected like a beautiful dream I might've had and you turned it into music. Um, it's simply one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard in my life. Um, it's a masterclass in economical track construction. And it's, it's basically, the reason we're talking about this album right now. Uh, one of them anyway. Uh, it is elementally simple. It's a playful uh, melody that is alternately forlorn and optimistic. 
um, and the jazzy but disciplined drumming, which itself alternates from being satisfyingly tight to deliriously out of step. Uh, this disorienting development is clearly intentional though, and it adds to the effect of the song for me, which is in evoking the feeling of being absolutely deliriously happy experiencing a moment of pure unbridled joy and contentment and also not knowing how to process it becoming scared of losing it and trying with all your might to cling to cling to it such that you forget to simply exist in it that's what the chaos in the center central part of this track feels like to me and then you get this amazing moment about four and a half minutes in where everything kind of stops there's a very brief period of silence and the drums come back in again finding focus and hitting the rhythm again and and that's to me that's the acceptance that's the uh, finally allowing yourself to surrender to a perfect feeling and to not have to control it or to fear it uh, the pure ecstasy of the track's climax is like very few things in all of music. It's a captivating catharsis that does not feel cheaply emotional, despite the simplicity, uh, but richly earned. Um, uh, I just like, it's hard not to well up at the end of this song, to be honest. Um, and, and ever since I discovered this album, I have been trying to find... Uh, and soundtrack certain experiences in my life and, and, and places that I've been with this song um, because it just it just makes everything feel sweeter um, yeah uh, and then you get the use of another interlude put to fantastic use with Andre uh, serving as a very pretty epilogue to our iambic nine poetry and it ties a neat bow around the first act of a turbulent album then you get the second act of the record beginning, um, surely enough with a complete and total 180 from the much of the aesthetic established thus far. Gone is the overt attempts at swooning beauty and in a rush, an absolute head trip of IDM clatter and pieces that stretch, contort and pummel. Uh, 50 Cycles is one of the straight up weirdest pieces of IDM uh, you will likely ever hear in your life uh, from one of the genre's biggest artists anyway you might hear shit weirder than this from underground artists but not from someone like square pusher necessarily um, uh, it's uh, the almost drunken swagger of its thwacking beat serves as a bedrock for a heavily distorted vocal performance from tom which is nearly illegible and almost approaches rapping at certain points um, and, and then at other points, it almost sounds like the automated reading of the terms and conditions in an infomercial. Uh, even as the snatches of lyrics that we do get are so esoteric as to feel meaningless. Uh, I think it's all really, the, the meaning of what he's saying is really irrelevant. It's all just creating that feeling of disorientation. Um, ultimately, the track settles into a skittering and racing percussive skirmish as these enormous, looming, and doomy reverbed chords just hang above the mix. It's, it's just a really, really superb track. Um, probably the one on the record that took the most time to grow on me, but now I'm just in awe of it. Um, the brooding Menelik begins more patiently. Uh, it continues the anxious atmosphere of the previous track, um, but it gives that unhinged drum and bass programming a brighter spotlight, manipulating and toying with the percussive texture in a really playful way. Uh, the total rhythmic fuckery of Sea Town Smash sounds like a parodic remix of the Seinfeld bass line. Um, and, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> and the highlight is this brief pause in the track in which you can clearly hear an audience member giving the encouraging cheer of come on you cunt i remember that that's fun um <laughs> it's a track like this that nicely demonstrates tom's sense of humor and not taking himself terribly seriously it's an irreverent quality that befits all of the best artists born from this scene uh steinbolt uh talked to death by many of you, deservingly so. Uh, this track represents many of the harsher sonic textures of the record and of Tom's entire oeuvre up to this point. 
taken to their logical extreme in a dizzying display of start-stop noise collisions that at times sound like animated panels of sheet metal having sex. That's hard. Sure. Not content to simply provide a straightforward harsh noise exercise, Tom layers his piece with more cathedral-sized ambient pads, which lend the whole thing a sense of Baroque melodrama, which is honestly kind of fucking hilarious, but also equally dark and unsettling. Um, The absolutely nightmarish and arched pathway uh, is less directly abrasive, but is somehow even more fucked and unnerving than Steinbolt. A uh, collision of bass work that sounds like drowning, and then walls of metallic glitching in the track's first half that eventually just disintegrate entirely. Um, the record's final extended movement uh, is dominated by a sequence of three successive tracks that, in my opinion, uh, makes for one of the most impressive uh, three track runs in the entire kind of world of electronic music. Uh, District Line 2 is yet another. This dizzying display of drill and bass programming pushed to its limit and twisted into something refreshing and new through sheer force of will. Uh, it, it features these cut up and manipulated vocal samples, which are effectively played like an instrument, uh, and they kind of seep color across this dense and dark mix. Circle Wave is even better and arguably another career highlight with Tom perhaps slyly admitting as much by introducing himself by name as the track begins. Um, Now, I don't know if, I'm sure you'll all remember this, but the drum solo that opens this track, like Mm -hmm. you just get this drum solo for like two minutes. Uh, It's it's nothing short of dizzying. It reminds me of the drum solo that opens, I think the third movement of A Love Supreme. Um, which is not to say that you know it's a, it's at that level, but like I felt it. It's, it's close enough. Um, I'm gonna say it could be in the same tier. Uh, it's it's yeah, it's dizzying and it's frankly it's fucking unfair. Uh, for all the tricks that Tom has pulled <laughs> out of his sleeve across the record so far, to kick this track off with a spare but punchy unadorned drum solo just feels like showing off. But I'm here for it. Um, if you've got it, flaunt it. Uh, Like Iambic, this track mixes organic drum work with a gentle, slow-moving and emotive melody, this time played on keys, uh, and with a vaguely organ-like quality that makes it feel almost hymnal at points, uh, like the afterimage of some great song of devotion. Uh, Tetrasync. Deep breath. Tetrasync uh, mm. is maybe the most impressive, surging, progressive, and climactic piece of all. It is perfectly pitched and positioned to serve as a thrilling summary of all that has come before. But somehow, somehow, this track fires on even more cylinders than anything before it. Uh, it's not a full on assault like the record's midsection, it's much more measured. Uh, in the pace, but the result of that is something that I think is even more emotionally effective and affecting. Uh, All of the elements that have made the record so fascinating and fun up until this point are unified in Tetrasync. From Tom's frenetic bass work, to his skillful programming, to the impeccable timing of his jazzy drumming. There's also this gently picked guitar melody that serves as the core of the track, with a number of curious key changes and time changes that keep it both interesting and subversive. The first time I heard it, this melody, I tried to, I I found myself kind of at a distance from it and weirdly struggling to get into it. But the more I listened to it, the more I appreciated it. Now I love it. Um, It might seem like a whole lot of stuff without a tangible focus or drive at first, but this track is definitely one that rewards deep listening. Uh, I think it's, it's just, it's as impressive as the best Ortega tracks. Um, the enormous washes of cavernous noise that ride into this track about seven minutes in with these just incredible, he just does these amazing drum fills over the top of this noise as it comes in and it's like, holy shit. And, it, and the drum fills kind of introduce this new counter melody. Uh, and basically it's the biggest holy shit moment on the album where it's like, whoa, this track was a 10 and it just went to 20. <laughs> 
Uh, and then you get that hilariously in the final minutes of the song, it all kind of just falls away. You left with this relatively straightforward um, drum exercise, which works well, I think, as a kind of come down um, at the end of the track. Um, but then, ever the sequencing king, Tom closes the record on a more plaintive and calming note, allowing you to process all that he's thrown at you while still tying a bow around the arc of the record itself. And this comes in the form of the two twin two-minute pieces, uh, Tom Ab Help Bus and Every Day I Love, which essentially run together as one percussive, percussionless track. Um, for me, uh, sitting in the sunset, listening to the final stretch of this record, having my mind obliterated by Tetrasync, I felt it slowly coming together again. And this unexpected feeling of like tranquility just washed over me. I felt a total calm. The storm had passed. I watched the sun slowly disappear beneath the hilltops, moment by moment, until the final sliver made its last ascent as the closing track introduces this gorgeous, aching final melody that seems both nostalgic and wistful. As ever, the control of tone here is outstanding. I sat there, looking up at a red sky as the record closed, and I heard the sounds of the world around me slowly easing back into my perception. It really felt like I had been on some kind of wild adventure, but now I was home, and all my familiar comforts confirmed it. I know I'm lucky enough to be here all the time, but with a record like this, I feel even luckier to know that I don't have to go anywhere to escape. Perfect album. Damn. What a good review. Well done, sir. I would uh, just like to point out that the second, the, the moment Tyler finished that review, I got a notification on my phone. We got a comment on our Go Farther and Lightness video. Oh the comment God, reads no. as following. I absolutely adore your Go Farther and Lightness review. You guys are such nerds. I love it. Uh, that, that's hard. Our, our podcast um, on Twitter oh, got nice. a comment from a mutual, a long time mutual of mine recently. I can't remember which episode it was, but they said that we all have amazing taste. <laughs> I know. That was so sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to process any of that. Yes. But let's so, your should, so to process that, should we move into favorite tracks? Well, so yes. process it but by the boys we, and one do, girl. Before we do, I just want to say that I'm super pleased. I try to reserve uh, my expectations um, in terms of like records I review because I don't always mm -hmm. land with everyone. But I want to say that it was a real pleasant and, and nice surprise to see that everyone here pretty much uh, really, really, really enjoys this record to, to degree degrees. And that mm -hmm. is awesome. I'm glad that something like this, that is what it is, can be the unifier. Because that's cool. Yeah. Like, how oh, fucking you know. weird is it that all five of us managed to enjoy something this fucking bonkers? Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go into our favorite tracks and ratings, and let's go in yeah. reverse order for once. Um, yeah. uh, so, my three favorite tracks are uh, Iambic Nine Poetry, uh, Tetra Sync and Ultra Visitor. Um, I mean, God. <laughs> <laughs> so many to choose from, to be honest. But those three are like the towering achievements of this record, I think. Yeah. Uh, my least favorite track, uh, I don't really have one, to be honest. I guess if I had to pick one, I would probably say Telluric Peace, but I think it eases you from the chaos of Arch Pathway to the measured yeah. rhythm of District Line really nicely. So I can't be too mad at it. Uh, and the record gets a hearty 10 out of 10 from me. Wow. Who could have seen that coming, August? <laughs> okay. Uh, Sersha. Righty-ho. Let me just find my page on this. Uh, my favorite songs include 50 Cycles, Stein Bolt, and Iambic Nine Poetry. And this record gets a 7 and a half out of ten from me. Sick. I'll take it. Morgan. And a half. Uh, my three favorite tracks are amb uh, amb uh, ambi uh, 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 Iambic Nine Poetry. I'm not drunk. Shut up. 
iambic pentameter. Yep, that's the th yep, that's the thing. Yep, that's what he said. Yep. <laughs> iambic nine pronounce, poetry. loser. Shut up. <laughs> iambic nine poetry, tetrasync, and fifty cycles. Um, least favorite is probably telluric piece. Um. I like the idea of an interlude being where that is. I think it's great for the pacing, but just, uh, just I'm not sold on that one in particular. Um, and like, I, I've only listened to this like five times and I'm going to listen to it so many more times in the future. <laughs> so this is a hesitant nine out of 10. Oof. Just so I don't shoot my load too early. Two um, nines from Morgan in one day on IDM records. Sick. Yes. Um, All right. August. My three favorite tracks would have to be Ultra Visitor. Uh, boy, yeah, probably Tetris Sync and Steinbolt. My least favorite. I'd have to agree with the Telluric Peace sentiment. I would give this album an eight out of ten. Well, I, thought you were gonna, I thought it was going to be infinity out of 10. Damn. That would be a... Uh, wow. Unprecedented. Yep. When people's, when people's least favorite track is like a minute long on an 80-minute album, I take that as a yep. win. Yeah, I would yeah. say that's true. The dub <laughs> from Mr. Pusher. And uh, that's not changing. Um I I mainly like Telluric Peace is my least favorite track purely by merit of the fact that it's just like not the other songs here. <laughs> so like <laughs> oh gay. Uh but my three favorite Did tracks... you say oh gay? I'm here. Uh, yes. Friend August we're, is just sitting here, here like this is the advantage of being the straight edge in a fucking messy ass podcast of alcoholics. <laughs> Alcoholics, I'm not drunk. My three favorite tracks are Iambic Nine Poetry, Steinbolt, and I'm going to shout out Circle Wave. Yeah, Circle Wave and deserves the love. That would be my fourth favorite song. If I had yeah, to. that fucking song rules, and <laughs> I'm going to give this a emphatic 9.5 out of 10, and Oof. like Morgan very very possible that has room to grow okay so that's an 8.8 .8 overall Sick. for for records uh yashimi battles to ping robots got 8.8 mm. .8, and exile mm. and guy vault got 8.9 mm. um is there anything in modern records i can compare it to uh well fever ridge has got nine so yeah okay yeah um, Tone got nine and a half well that's not yeah. that's further away um or got 8.4 that's yeah. closer. Yeah. yeah. I'm just pleased. That's that, the episode. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Next, next week's yeah. Record Club review is going to be another favorite of mine, but recommended yes. by Jake because it's also a favorite of Jake's. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, Jake, talk to us about what you're recommending next week. What we are going to be reviewing, it'll be kind of a first in a way, just because this is technically not like an. It's a first album compilation, per se. Record, right? It is a compilation, a yeah. burial mm -hmm. compilation tunes 2011 through 2019 it is a series of eps that the artist burial released with throughout the last decade compiled into one giant sweeping epic of electronic idm ambient shit and yeah. i it is one of my favorite it is probably my favorite album of that particular genre I was introduced to it through Tyler and it has remained a favorite ever since. And I am happy to share it just because it is such a, a wonderful piece of music that has uh, helped me many a times with focusing, with writing, passing the time. I, I love it to bits and I hope that other people might also yeah. love it to bits. Yeah. I mean, look, if we, we, we're going to cover Fugazi in the future. If we can do 13 songs with them, we can do this for Burial. So, exactly. yeah. Noted can, ambient artist Fugazi. We can do whatever we want. This oh, it's our podcast. So. Yeah, oh, it is. yeah, we so, literally can. To, to see us off, Rock Over London. Rock on, Rock on Chicago. Duracell. You can't top the copper top.